Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're definitely going to need to know how to handle a problem like this. And what's going on here? Well, we have two equations with two variables, x and y, and we want to solve for these values, x and y. Okay, so that is the objective of this problem. But what is the big picture topic here? What type of problem uh, is this? What's the category of uh, problems? Well, this is a very, very big, important topic in algebra. If you know the uh, answer to that question, put that into the comment section. Better yet, if you know how to solve the problem, go ahead and put your solutions into the comment section. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you the answer here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, all of you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Okay, You could do much, much better, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help with your current math course or maybe some sort of special test you're studying for, um, uh, getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, maybe the ASVAB or teacher certification exam, or if you homeschool, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I actually have over 100 different math courses that cover all these various categories. I promise uh, it will help you out big time. Now, hopefully you have awesome math notes. If you do not, work on improving your notes. Everything will get much, much better for you in terms of mathematics. But in the meantime, you can use my notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into the solution to this problem. And there you go. Okay, so here's the problem. And the answer is x is equal to 3 fourths and y is equal to 5 fourths. But I asked you another question, okay? The question was, uh, question was uh, what is the big picture topic that we're looking at here? Well, hopefully you said systems or two variable systems or two variable linear systems. As long as you had the word uh, systems, I'm going to give you full credit to this problem. Matter of fact, I need to give you a nice little happy face in A plus 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so very, very good. But uh, let's talk a little bit about systems real quick before we get into this problem because I want to make sure all of you have a pretty decent basic understanding of what a system is. Okay, so let me just draw a little XY plane here. Okay. And we'll talk about this in just one second, but let me go ahead and talk about, uh, again, uh, this topic. And the topic is systems. Well, let me just spell this uh, out here. Systems, okay. Spell it out correctly. But in mathematics, there's all different sorts of systems. What we're talking about here is something called a linear system and specifically a two variable linear system. But let's look at the uh, root word here linear okay that is line okay so we're talking about things that involve lines lines that you can graph on the xy plane so basically what we have here is one line we'll call this line one and another line line two hopefully if i uh, asked you to graph this line x plus y is equal to two you have the algebra skills to plot this line on the xy plane if you do not well, that's something you definitely need to improve upon, especially if you are studying systems right now. It's uh, kind of a prerequisite skill that you already know how to uh, find the equations of lines and graph lines. But this is another equation that we could graph pretty easily. But let's suppose we had two lines, maybe not these lines. I'm just going to uh, sketch out some lines. Let's say I had uh, one line here, line one, and another line here, line two. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. These two lines clearly intersect at this point. So what's unique about this point? Well, this point happens to be on this line here, and it's also on this line here, okay? That's the point of intersection. Well, effectively, that is the solution to the system, okay? When we're talking about linear systems, two variable linear systems, what we're looking for is this point of intersection. So how do we describe a point on the xy plane? Well, we describe it as an xy ordered pair. So here is our answer, okay, again, to this system. If I was to graph this line and this line, where would these two lines cross or intersect? Well, they would intersect at the xy 
uh, ordered pair, three-fourths and five-fourths. So that's basically the main idea behind all linear system. But let's talk a little bit more about linear systems here real quick, which is kind of bonus knowledge because, you know, this is a big problem uh, for a lot of math students. They just kind of do problems. They don't really understand the topic they're studying. And then you really can't connect the dots on, you know, more challenging uh, problems, especially like word problems and whatnot. So let me take one more moment to explain a little bit more about systems. So let's say I had uh, one line, okay, and this was my line there. And let's see, I had another line like uh, this. Okay, here's our two lines uh, in a system, and I was to graph them, and uh, it, basically the result was this. So what's going on here? Well, it doesn't look like these lines cross. Well, if they do not cross, there is no solution. So can you have systems that have no solutions? Absolutely. So this system has no solution. So that is a possibility when you take on a linear system problem. Now, there is actually one other possibility. Let's suppose I graphed one line, and then I graphed my second line, okay? And that second line was actually right on top of that first line. So how many points of intersection uh, do these two lines have? Well, they have infinitely many uh, points of intersection. So that's another possibility you can have with systems. You can have infinitely, uh, infinitely many solutions. So that's kind of a quick crash course on systems. Again, if you know how to solve for X and Y, but you don't really know what's going on conceptually or understand the big picture topic, then that's not um, really you know, going to be adequate. Okay, When you study mathematics, you need to understand the big picture and how everything kind of falls uh, in line. So now let's go ahead and talk about uh, the various techniques we can find the points of intersection in a system. Well, Actually, there's quite a few different techniques, but at the algebra one level, first year algebra level, there's three primary techniques that uh, most students learn. The first one is the graphing technique, okay? So this particular problem, we could actually graph these lines on a piece of graph paper, just graph the lines and look, hey, where do these two lines cross? Uh, where do they intersect? Well, uh, here's the points of intersection, and that would be um, uh, that, right? We would have solved the problem, but the graphing uh, method is not really a practical method. You definitely need to know it. It's just uh, one of these things that you could do. But really what you need is to, uh, some algebraic methods, okay? So we need some do some stuff with some algebra. So we have two primary techniques. The first is the substitution method, and the second is the elimination and or le uh, linear combination method. Uh, they kind of go by uh, the one name or the other or both, okay? So elimination method, linear combination method, or elimination, linear combination method, and or substitution method. So these are the primary techniques that most of you are going to be using to solve a problem like this. Now, here's the deal, okay? You're going to need to understand this technique. You're going to have to understand this technique, and you're going to have to understand this technique. You're going to have to understand all of them. Uh, as various tools to solve systems. Okay, so that's just a quick overview. I know I took some time to explain this, but again, uh, it's really important that you see the big picture when it comes to uh, systems and all math topics. If you understand the big pictures, uh, the big picture, then it's just going to be much easier to kind of keep track of all the different skills that you're learning and why you're uh, learning them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this system, uh, which is, of course, the point of intersection. So how can we do this? Well, we're actually going to be using the substitution method. Okay, this problem is actually set up very nicely for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. Okay, so when we're talking about the substitution method and or elimination uh, linear combination method, what we're trying to do, the, the main idea is to have one equation, one equation with one variable. Okay, something like this, 2x plus x is equal to 3. Now, all of you out there could solve this equation, 2x plus x is equal to 3, because we have the same variable x, it's in one equation, so this is just a basic um, uh, a linear equation to solve, okay? But here we have x and y. We can't really combine these, this y and x. So we have to um, kind of, you know, fix this in order so we, uh, so we can have one equation in one variable. That variable can be x or it could be y, whatever is easier. So that's what you want to be thinking about 
when you're faced with a two variable linear system. So let's go ahead and see how we could do that. Well, here we have x plus y is equal to two. Let's uh, focus in on this y. Well, let's suppose I was like, okay, this y, I wanna create one equation with one variable. What if I can get some uh, x's here, okay? And let's get rid of this y. Could we replace that y with some x's? Absolutely, because in this second equation, we're saying that y, okay, y is equal to 3x minus 1. So it's really up to me. Do I want to write a y or 3x minus 1? It's my choice. Well, instead of writing a y, I'm going to put in a 3x minus 1, okay? Because when I do put in a 3x minus 1, I'm going to get that one equation in one variable. So that's kind of what you need to be thinking about. And let's go ahead and do that now, okay? All right, so right here, I'm going to replace this y with this 3x minus 1. So anytime you're replacing anything, always put grouping symbols around. That's a really good practice to do so you don't get in trouble in other type of problems. But uh, anyways, we're going to put uh, grouping symbols. We're going to replace this y with 3x minus 1. So this first equation is going to end up being x plus 3x minus 1 is equal to 2. And finally, we have one equation with one variable, that variable being, uh, that variable being x. And now this is super easy to solve for. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to have x plus 3x is 4x minus 1 is equal to 2. I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. I get 4x is equal to 3. And to solve for x, I divide both sides of the equation by 4. So x is equal to uh, 3 fourths. Okay, so remember, I'm looking for that xy ordered pair, that point of intersection of these two lines, well, I just found the x uh, coordinate. So now I need to go ahead and find the y coordinate and we will have solved this problem. So how can I find the, uh, the y coordinate? Well, let's go back and look at our original problem. We have this lovely equation right here that says y is equal to three x minus one. So if I know the value of x, I can just plug it in right there do this math and I will get y. I could use this to, uh, top equation as well because I know what x is, I could solve for y, but always choose the easiest equation. This is by far the easiest equation to get our y value. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so y is equal to three x minus one. I already know that x is equal to three fourths. So I'm simply gonna uh, replace this x with uh, that three-fourths there, okay? So I'm gonna get y is equal to three times three-fourths minus one. So y is equal to uh, three times three, okay? Remember, these are fractions, multiplying fractions. That's nine-fourths minus one, okay? And again, hopefully you are an expert at fractions. If you're not, I'll give you some uh, suggestions on all this in, uh, in one second if you need to improve in any of these skills. But nine-fourths minus one, one's the same thing as four over four. So now I have a common denominator. So now I just subtract the numerator. So four from nine or nine minus four is five. So this is five fourths. And there you go. Okay, that was uh, what y is equal to five fourths. So now we have both our x and y coordinates. Okay, we just had, uh, we first saw for y and then we got x. And how do we do that? Remember, we got one variable in one equation. We got that particular variable. In this case, we got the x. And then once we had that value, it was easy to solve for y. Okay, so this is actually a super, uh, pretty easy uh, substitution method problem because this problem right here is already set up for us. We already have this variable solved. So this is, a, you know, pretty much like an introductory level um, systems problem. Okay, so let's talk about uh, how to improve. So if you are studying systems, okay, uh, sometimes this is introduced even at the pre-algebra level. Uh, a couple of things that you need to know. One, you already need to know how to graph lines, um, finding the equation of lines, and all the other uh, basic algebra things before that, i.e. know how to solve equations and how to work with fractions, etc. So uh, if you are struggling with fractions or equations, I would suggest maybe checking out my pre-algebra course. Of course, I have many, many videos on my YouTube channel on all these various topics. So you can check that out as well. But if you want like more formal instruction on this, I would check out either my pre-algebra course, but I really get heavy duty into systems, linear systems, and my Algebra 1 course. I do its course. This is a topic that's also covered in Algebra 2 and even pre-calculus, huge topic in mathematics, and you can have more than 
uh, two variables. You can have an X, you can have a Y, you can have a Z, you can have as many variables as you want. But uh, notice right here, we have two variables we're solving for. We need two equations. So if I was trying to solve a system with X, Y, Z, I'm going to need three equations. And then we have these things called nonlinear systems. It just gets more and more exciting. That's why you want to stick with math. It's really, really good for your brain. Okay, but hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.